Okay. We're going to make the uh, lemon cauliflower dish. And basically, like I said earlier, I'm going to show you how to slow cook this, the vegetables with the quinoa and the cooking liquid so you have time to do other things. You don't have to be standing over the stove and chopping and all that stuff. So first thing we're going to do is chop the onion, cauliflower, carrot, and garlic. So I haven't chopped up the cauliflower yet. With the onion, I decided to use green onion today. You can use any kind of onion. It's going to be just fine. And I'm going to chop this into pretty small pieces. The uh, carrot I decided just to kind of do some half moons. I used this slicer, this mandolin that I love and just sliced it like that and then just cut them with my knife. So and the second it. step of the recipe says to seal the vegetables with a little bit of coconut oil in a frying pan on medium heat. So basically sealing vegetables helps the vegetable to kind of maintain its flavor. You don't want it to be completely depleted. So and then as soon as you put the oil in, put in the first vegetable to seal. Otherwise, you're just wasting your oil if you're not putting the vegetable in right away. So we'll heat that pan up. So we've got some green onion. I actually separated more of the white part of the green onion with the green part. We're going to use some of the more tenacious green part um, in the quinoa dish and some of the white. And we'll, we'll keep some of the white for the, the salad that we're going to make. I also chopped up a couple jalapenos. It doesn't say jalapeno in your recipe. A lot of times I see what I have on hand, what's fresh, and decide whether or not to put some of these items in. Okay, We're so going to probably have a hot pan here. So I'm going to do a tablespoon of this coconut oil. Coconut oil is solid in the winter, right? Liquid in the, in the summertime here. So I'm going to let that melt. Using red onion or yellow onion, I would put that in first. You basically want to seal the vegetable that takes the long, longest to cook. You want to start with that one first, unless you're using onions or mushrooms. Mushrooms always go first because they like to steal all the oil and you want to get those cooked down before you add anything else. Peeling these vegetables basically means I'm going to toss them around the oil and just let them lightly seal with oil. It's important we're not adding salt at this stage because salt is going to open those cell membranes and it's going to add the water element into this dish and we don't want to do that until we're done sealing. Turn this down to about a medium heat while I'm sealing. I'm going to go ahead and add the carrot. We could have done the carrot first. That's a root vegetable. It's further in the earth, so it's going to take longer to cook. And you really don't need to keep adding oil as you add these vegetables. Because these carrots are going to steal some oil from the cauliflower. Eye appeal is really important in dishes. In addition to just adding a lot more um, vitamins into your meal, a variety of vitamins if you have multiple colors. Okay, I'm going to add the green onion here. Turn it down a little bit so nothing's burning. I am going to heat up some water over here. For the quinoa, we're using one cup of quinoa, so we're going to need two cups of cooking liquid with that. And I'm going to use, part of my cooking liquid, I'm going to use lemon, okay? A lot of times lemon is helpful when cooking quinoa because quinoa can have a little bit of a bitter taste and the, the acid is going to cut down on that. That's about an eighth cup of lemon. I'm just going to eyeball this a little bit. Liquid. After the cooking liquid is added, that's when you want to add your herbs and spices and sea salt and things like that. Okay. And we are going to use some onion powder. 
garlic powder, some salt and pepper, and this basil I've dried from growing it myself, so it's in pretty large pieces. So I'm gonna put it in my hands and break it up as I'm putting it into the pan. Give this a little toss. So we're not burning. You could use vegetable broth or something else in place of water. That would be fine. And the quinoa. Is that, now, is that dried? <clears throat> um, this quinoa is rinsed. It was just, uh, I rinsed it before rinse? you guys got here. It, over in water. Did you soak it for a while? I didn't soak it. But you can soak it. Any grains, and quinoa is actually a seed, not a grain, but any, any grains will become more digestible if you soak them first. Quinoa in particular needs to be rinsed unless the package says pre-rinsed. Quinoa seed has a film on it that you really want to get rid of, otherwise it could become pretty bitter. So I'm stirring this up to make sure our quinoa gets below the water surface here as best I can. So I'm gonna, going to intuitively just kind of put some of these herbs and spices in. As far as sea salt goes, a lot of times I, I visualize how many layers of food do I have in here based on how big the chunks of food are. So I have about three layers of food in here. So I'm gonna kind of sprinkle this across three times. That's one, two, three. And my heart says just a little bit more. Just some pepper. Get some onion powder in here. About a teaspoon, I think I put in. And then some garlic powder. Even though we have fresh garlic in here as well, garlic powder just adds another element to it. So a lot of times I'll combine the two. And then we've got our dried basil. And again, I'm gonna crush it in my hands. I'm gonna do that one more time. So probably after it's crushed, about two teaspoons. That's what it looks like to me. If you're using a lot of dried herbs in your cooking, it's helpful to put a spot of oil where those herbs are to help get those herbs throughout the dish so it doesn't just taste like grass. A lot of these dried herbs you really need to get the flavor out. Okay, so we have our vegetables sealed. We added the cooking liquid. We added the grain, the quinoa. And then we added our salt and pepper and herbs. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover this. And it is starting to simmer. So I'm gonna turn it down to low. And we'll put a timer on for 20 minutes because that's how long quinoa takes to cook. If we used a different grain, use the timing for that grain. You could use millet um, is a gluten-free grain, amaranth, um, you could use any kind of rice. I love wild rice, it's actually a grass. Uh, so a lot of variations you could use here. So checking the quinoa dish, most of the water is absorbed. So we'll put some on the plate. I'm going to turn this off and then we're just going to drizzle a little bit of this tahini sauce with a little extra flavor and then we can garnish it with some basil.